Now, to that end, my next guest is Mohammed Shafiq, head of the Ramadan Foundation. We spoke about the Muslim community's responsibilities and its response after the Manchester attacks two weeks ago. And it turns out now that he's also had a close encounter with one of the London Bridge attackers. Mohammed, thanks for joining me from Manchester. It is extraordinary that you were, you know, one of the community who actually tried to confront both Chowdhury and Khurambat. How did that go? Why, what happened? Um, it was just after the brutal murder of British soldier Lee Rigby in uh, May 2013. I was outside House of Commons doing a number of TV interviews, and I caught the eye of Anjem Chowdhury doing TV interviews, spewing his hatred that we've heard from tonight, from what you've shown from 2007, uh, glorifying terrorism, encouraging people to be brainwashed, and um, celebrating the fact that we have seen these terrorist atrocities. Uh, and as I went to confront him, I was uh, approached by uh, Kuram Butt, uh, who called me a, um, a murtad. And as you would know, rightly you know, that that term is what ISIS use, Daesh use, uh, if they don't like somebody and they want to get rid of them. Uh, it's a death sentence. And that was used towards me. I was called a stooge, I was called a government stooge, and I was called an apologist. Uh, for, uh, for, for David Cameron and his government, just because of my record uh, speaking up against uh, the brutal murder of Lee Rigby. And, Mohammed, so as, as, we, as we're talking, we're showing this documentary. I mean, Khuram Bhatt was even in a documentary. What did you do when you heard them and you confronted them? Did you report them? So, at the time, I reported on Jem Chaudhry. I actually reported on Jem Chaudhry six, seven times um, over, over, I probably said, 10, 12 years since I've been working in this field, and, and many other people in the Muslim community have been doing exactly the same thing. The authorities, uh, the minister, uh, Elwood, uh, wasn't able to tell us uh, what the authorities knew. Time and time again, these people have been reported to the authorities, and the authorities did nothing. What do they need to do? They, they, they travel around this country promoting their hatred, their vision uh, of a divided society, they're endorsing violence and the killing of innocent people, and they celebrate the barbaric crimes of ISIS. If that is not enough to have the police and the authorities look into them, then I'm really, really scared so, about the future. So let me ask you this, because we know that Khurram Bhatt was on some kind of a watch list in 2015, and then we're told by the Met that that was downgraded because they saw no evidence of an actual attack being planned. And we know that there's, you know, thousands of people out there who are on these lists, and there obviously aren't enough police to deal with it. They could never be. What do you think the authorities need to do? Because this is a, a real crunch at the moment. Well, we have a law in this country, um, uh, Christiana, which is glorification of terrorism. And I believe Anjem Chaudhry and his cohort and his extremist followers uh, meet the requirement, the criteria for glorification of terrorism. So I have no problem as do people in the Muslim community if those people are charged and convicted in a court of law and then given a longer jail term. Uh, the, the, the authorities have to really understand that the idea that the Prime Minister Theresa May in her speech on Sunday pointed the figure at the Muslim community yeah. saying that we were tolerant um, of extremism. Actually, the reality is somewhat opposite. It's her government that have failed to protect the police. They cut police numbers by 20,000. They cut the budget of the police by 10 percent. So, you know, if anybody wants to shine a light mm -hmm. about failures, I think the government need to look a bit closer C to home. Can I ask you one very practical question? The government sure. and the authorities say they didn't, they don't have a record of, for instance, the call you told me about that Manchester people reported the killer there. Do people know who to call? Is there, you know, holes in that net? Well, I think the, the, the facts are that Greater Manchester Police said they have no record of any calls. But the counter-terrorism hotline, which is the national hotline number, which is a free phone number, um, haven't denied that calls were made to their hotline. So Greater Manchester Police may have not known about the individuals but the national hotline were aware of it. It's clear from what you're saying that there needs to be a better sort of collection centre for these calls. Mohammed Shafiq, thank you very much for joining us. Thanks. Now, Donald Trump's Twitter barrage against the London mayor has raised plenty of hackles here.